Have you been thinking about buying a new telescope, but you can't decide what kind of telescope to get? Well, in this episode, I'm going to give you all the information you need to help you decide what kind of telescope best suits your needs. What kind of telescope should I get? Should I get a 12-inch Schmidt Cassegrain? Mm, it's probably too heavy, too expensive. Maybe I should get a 10-inch Dobsonian. That won't cost that much. I'll get lots of aperture. Get a six inch refractor? That would be nice. Probably very expensive. And what kind of mount would I put it on? Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures, with me, Sula. This episode is about what kind of telescope should you get. Before we start, you need to answer some questions. Can you identify the brightest stars, most of the constellations, you know the phases of the moon, you can find the planets, and have you gone out with a simple pair of binoculars and looked at the planets, the moon, some objects like the Pleiades or the Beehive Cluster, because what they look like in a pair of binoculars will closely resemble what they're going to look like in a small telescope. Well, if you've done that and you really want a telescope, let's talk about the types of telescopes available to amateur astronomers. There are three different kinds. There are refractors, reflectors, which includes Dobsonians, and catadioptric telescopes. Let's start talking about refractors. Refractors, like this one, use a lens at the front of the telescope to gather the light and they direct it to the other end where the eyepiece goes, usually in a diagonal to make it more comfortable. But lenses cause the different wavelengths of light to come to focus at different points and this causes refractors to have false colors. To account for that, some refractors will add additional pieces of glass, including an extra low dispersion glass, so that all of the light waves come to focus at the same point and it has no false colors or very little false colors. Those are called apochromatic refractors. And they're very expensive because of the additional glass, especially the extra low dispersion or ED glass is usually made from rare earth materials and it's very expensive. You can get refractors that don't have the additional glass, and those are called achromatic, and they're going to have some false colors. Some people don't mind. Personally, I cannot bear false colors. I can't tolerate it. But a refractor that's an achromat is much cheaper than an apochromatic because it'll just have one lens. Refractors in general are known for having crisp, bright images on an inky black background and providing high contrast, and they're very pleasing to look through. But refractors are the most expensive telescope per inch of aperture. Aperture is the diameter of the primary lens, or in the case of a reflector, the primary mirror. The bigger the aperture, the more light it can gather, and therefore more things you can see in the telescope. With refractors, generally up to maybe seven inches of aperture is all you'll be able to get as a consumer because after that, you're talking about an enormous telescope that's very long and very heavy and you would need your own personal observatory to house it because it just wouldn't be practical to move it around and very expensive. But smaller refractors, anywhere from 80 millimeters, which is what this telescope is, up to six or seven inches, is the range for the typical consumer amateur astronomer. Refractors are wonderful telescopes, and you might be tempted to say, well, I'll just get a refractor. 
but you need to keep in mind a few things. They're the most expensive telescope per inch of aperture, and they're usually sold OTA, optical tube assembly only, meaning that you also have to supply the mount because you'll need a good mount to put it on. And because they're so expensive, you probably won't be able to get a very large aperture one unless you have a lot of money in your budget because they're so expensive per inch of aperture. This telescope is an 80 millimeter refractor. It's a carbon fiber tube and it's a triplet. And I think it was $900 just for the telescope. So I had to get a mount separately for it. This is a equatorial mount that's manual and it wasn't very much. I think it was $179. But for that much money, over a thousand dollars, you could get a eight inch telescope, even a 10 inch telescope, which is a lot more aperture allowing you to see a lot more. So refractors are great, but before you decide, let me tell you about the second kind of telescope, reflectors. Reflectors use mirrors. They have a big mirror at the end of the telescope that gathers the light and then it's reflected back to a secondary mirror that's held in place at the top of the telescope with spider vanes, which causes some slight obstruction of the light coming in, but you probably won't notice that at all. Reflectors are much cheaper than refractors, and you can get a lot more aperture in a reflector than you can get in a refractor for the same price. You've probably heard somewhere along the way, maybe even from me, that the number one recommended telescope for a beginner is a Dobsonian because you get a lot of aperture for a reasonable price and a very simple to use design. Dobsonians are reflector telescopes, so they use a mirror and they're on a daisy wheel base that just goes up and down and left and right. So it's very easy to set up. You don't have to learn how to polar align and you get a fair amount of aperture allowing you to see a lot more than a smaller telescope. They have to be collimated so they have some maintenance but it's pretty easy to do and I have a video explaining how to collimate whereas refractors don't have any maintenance. This is an Orion SkyQuest 8 inch Dobsonian telescope. There are also standard reflector telescopes that have to be put on a mount and you can get one of those too, but then you also have to buy a mount for it. And if you get up in the eight inch range, you're talking about a very beefy mount that you would need to support that kind of weight because you're getting into a heavier telescope at that aperture. Whereas the Dobsonian is a complete package. It's everything that you need to get going. This is a type of reflector called a Dobsonian do not suffer from false colors like refractors do, but they suffer from another problem caused by the mirrors called coma, where the stars at the edge of the field of view will look hook shaped or tadpole shaped. That's called coma. And you can correct for it by putting a coma corrector in front of your eyepiece. But to me, it doesn't bother me that much. All reflectors suffer from it, but you're not typically looking at the edge of your field of view. Typically you're looking right in the center. And so most of the time you're not even gonna be aware of it, but if it bothers you, you can get a coma corrector. It's common on all reflector telescopes. This is a Dobsonian. It's a type of reflector that comes on its own base, a daisy wheel base that goes left and right and up and down. It's a very simple but elegant design and it's a complete package. So if you buy a Dobsonian, you get the telescope and the mount. Usually they come with two eyepieces, a 25 millimeter and a 10 millimeter eyepiece. So you're ready to go out of the box, except you have to put a few screws in the base. And then you have everything you need to get started. Typically they're not used for astrophotography because you have to push it to keep the object in the field of view. So you can only just take short shots of the moon maybe or the planets. Other than that, it's not really used for astrophotography, but they're wonderful telescopes and recommended for beginners because you get so much aperture for such an affordable price. I borrowed this one from my local astronomy club, but brand new, this Orion SkyQuest 8-inch 
telescope is $650, and that's not much for an 8-inch aperture telescope. You can see a lot with 8 inches. You can see nebulae, galaxies. You can see details on the moon, details on the planets. These are great all-around telescopes, and that's why they're recommended for beginners, and I recommend them too. While refractors don't require any kind of maintenance except to keep dust off of them, reflectors have to be collimated. It's a very simple process. It's easy to do, but you have to check it from time to time and make sure that the primary mirror is lined up with the secondary mirror so you can get the best focus. That's pretty easy to do, and other than that, you just keep dust off of it and it'll last you for a lifetime. So this 8-inch Dobsonia would be a great choice for a beginner or anyone on a budget to get a good amount of aperture for not very much money comparatively speaking but if 650 US dollars sounds like too much to you you can still get a reflector but I would caution you don't go below four inches because it's not going to allow you to see very much and usually those are very cheap telescopes you're not going to be happy and watch out for any reflector that uses spherical mirrors you want parabolic mirrors and watch out for whatever mount it comes with. A wobbly mount is gonna be nothing but trouble and you're not gonna see anything. You need a very sturdy mount for your telescope. So reflectors are economical, but don't go below four inches. A six inch Dobsonia would be a good choice too. I prefer bigger aperture and if you can handle the weight and go up to $900 I would even recommend a 10 inch Dobsonian. The third kind of telescope is a catadioptric telescope. They use lenses and mirrors and the two main types of catadioptric telescopes are schmidt cassegrain telescopes and maxutoff cassegrain telescopes. This one is a schmidt cassegrain It has a primary mirror at the back of the telescope but it has a secondary mirror also so that the light is folded twice and that's why they're so compact. Maxutoff cast grains do the same thing but at the front of both types of telescopes is a corrector plate because the mirrors cause some aberrations and so the corrector plate corrects for that in a Schmidt Cassegrain, it has a Schmidt corrector lens at the front, whereas a Maxutoff Cassegrain has a meniscus corrector plate at the front that's much thicker and harder to manufacture. And that's why you don't see Maxutoff Cassegrains bigger than seven inches in aperture. Usually six inches is the most you'll find. Whereas Schmidt Cassegrains, you can get very, very large aperture ones. This is an eight inch aperture Schmidt Cassegrain, but you can get 16 inch aperture Schmidt Cassegrains. They're enormous telescopes, <laughs> very heavy, <laughs> very expensive, but they're very popular telescopes because they're so compact. It only weighs 12 pounds, I think, but this one came OTA, optical tube only, and I had to get a mount for it, but they're also sold as packages. The most popular ones are the Celestron 6 and 8 inch Schmidt Cassegrains that come on a go-to mount and Mead makes their own version of these go-to Schmidt Cassegrains and you can also sometimes find Maxutoff Cassegrains on little go-to mounts. For a Maxutoff Cassegrain you're gonna have a telescope with very fine optics. They're known for having very sharp optics, even sharper than a Schmidt Cassegrain, and just as good, depending on which one you get sometimes as a refractor. But Maxutoff Cassegrains have a very narrow field of view. So you watch me get the eight inch Dobsonian out of the car. I didn't have any trouble with it and I'm pretty petite. But if you can afford it and you need something more compact than a Dobsonian, another choice would be a Schmidt Cassegrain. Cost a lot more. This is the same aperture as that Dobsonian. This is an 8 inch Mead Schmidt Cassegrain, but it was $1,600 just for the optical tube. So you would have to supply your own mount. I'm going to put it on this 
manual equatorial mount. It'll just hold it. It can only hold up to 13 pounds. And this mount was $179. So you're talking about $1,700 for the same amount of aperture as that eight inch Dobsonian. Another great option for your first telescope or beginner telescope would be a small refractor. I wouldn't go below 80 millimeters, 80, 90 millimeters. This is 102 millimeters. If you go below 80 millimeters, why bother? You can see the same thing through a big pair of binoculars and you get to look with both eyes. But 80, 90 millimeter refractor. Oh no, nothing this fancy. This is a, an electronic go-to mount. You don't need anything like that. You could just get an alt as mount to put your refractor on and learn the night sky. And you can see a lot with a small refractor. So that would be another good choice, but it's going to cost you a lot more than either one of these other choices. So Schmidt Cassegrains and Maxutov Cassegrains are great for viewing the planets because of the long focal length and the big aperture that you can get in a compact package. An 8-inch Dobsonian would be three times bigger than this telescope, but it comes with its own base. So when you're deciding what kind of telescope to get, you have to think about how you intend to use it. Are you just going to be taking it out onto your lawn at your house, or do you intend to put it in your car and take it to a dark sky site? And probably the most important question you need to answer that most people don't spend nearly enough time thinking about is how light polluted is it where you intend to observe because I big aperture is no substitute for dark skies you can't buy your way out of light pollution and no matter what size telescope you have if it's light polluted at your observing site you're not going to see as much and that's just a fact and along those same lines is the need to evaluate your observing site if you live in an apartment or a townhouse with a balcony it doesn't make any sense to buy a big Dobsonian and put it on the balcony where half the sky is blocked and the half that you can see is light polluted. So those are the things that you need to think about when deciding what kind of telescope best suits your needs. So those are the three basic types of telescopes you have to consider. Refractors, reflectors, and catadoptric telescopes. But what kind should you get? Well, you have to answer the questions that I posed at the beginning. How much money is in your budget? What do you intend to do with the telescope? And what kinds of things do you like to look at with the telescope? Are you going to try to use it for astrophotography? You can use Schmidt Cassegrain's for astrophotography, but they're much harder to learn on because of the long focal length. It's much easier to learn on a small refractor. So if you're mostly interested in astrophotography, the number one recommended telescope would be a small refractor of, say, 70 or 80 millimeters. And then you'd need a good, sturdy equatorial mount for it to go on. Schmidt Cassegrain's are very versatile. They can be used for astrophotography. They're great for the planets. They're wonderful for deep sky. They're very compact. They're very portable, but they're going to cost you a lot more than a reflector will. So you have to consider what's your budget. Are you going to be trying to travel with it? Or are you just going to be taking it into your backyard? And how light polluted is it where you intend to observe? If your budget is tight, but you want a little aperture, then I recommend a Dobsonian because they're the most economical for the most amount of aperture. They're wonderful telescopes. If you can spend more, then get a refractor. It's gonna cost you a lot more and you have to factor in that you'll need to get them out. If you need something compact and you have a little more money, then you should consider a catadoptric, a Schmidt Cassegrain or a Maxutov Cassegrain. They're very compact and, and a lot lighter and easier to move around. So it depends on how much you're willing to lug around and how much you have to spend. But if you are trying to save some money, then in part two, I'll talk about whether you should consider buying a used telescope to save some money. And then in part three, I'm gonna make a recommendation. So I'll see you in the next one. Hope you found this useful and let me know if you have any questions. <laughs>
<laughs> I'll see you soon. Until then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula signing off.